Welcome back to the channel. So this time we're going to do a quick review of this uh, new kit from Airfix. So this is actually going to go as part of the armor series that we're doing on the channel. Um, it was mentioned uh, at the beginning, uh, a few guys asked if we hope to be doing some of the smaller scales, uh, 172 and 148. So I thought I'd grab this one and just do this one straight out the box as a 172 build. Now this is um, an interesting development with Airfix for a number of reasons. Uh, as you can see I've bought this one straight uh, at the RRP price, so it is $9.99. Got this one from Salisbury Model Centre, which is a great little shop if you're in the uh, city or, or thereabouts. And this is the start of a new wave of 172nd vehicles from the Airfix range. So. Uh, the only one I really know that's recent is the Cromwell, and then it kind of stopped there. And it seems as though Airfix are trying to re-establish their uh, their beginners range, if you like. Uh, the Spitfire Mark Five C that's coming out as well at the same time. There's also a Tiger to go with this. Is replacing some of the very old um, and popular kits, but it's replacing them with something a little bit more up to date, a little bit easier to build, and um, a little bit more straightforward. Now. As I say, there's multiple reasons why this is interesting, so let's get in the box and we'll find out why. So, very typical stuff as usual, what we get in the box is a pile of sprues in the single bag, and we don't need that for this. So, what we've got there is some green sprues, and that's the first interesting thing, and we'll come back to that, but a little, but a little preview. If we bend this and let go, it springs back. So, they're using different plastic. So there we go, we'll come back to that. So first off we've got the instructions, a colour call out and the decals. I'm going to say decals this time because I get so many people saying that's how it's pronounced, which I know, but um, in Somerset we say decals. So what we've got here is two different options uh, for the running gear. The build up of the, the superstructure, the turret and the, the lower hull is uh, the same throughout, but you've got link and length tracks with separate bogies or you've got it all molded as one now you'd instantly think right okay well let's just you know if the details the same let's just go for that but there's there's something we need to look at as we go forward so we've got a multi-piece hole with uh, what looks like extremely good uh, connection points so hopefully there's no problem there for lining up We've got the exhaust and the uh, intake grills coming together there, as well as the sections there for where the sprockets are going to go onto the side of the hole. And then we get the easy way out is you connect your two already done bits of running gear and then you skip all these pages and you jump back in here when we start doing the upper hole. So we'll do that first. So we've got to drill out a few uh, parts underneath here if we're going to add some stowage, which again, we get a sprue of stowage, which is very, very good. Um, so you make that choice here, and there's a few bits to drill out here and there, depending on what you're going to do. So you refer to part D4 in step 42. So you jump over here, where's D4 step 42? That's the bit you want to add, so that's what you're drilling the holes for. Looks like we're going to get different versions of the Sherman um, here, which is interesting to start with a Firefly, uh, because that uses the M, well, it's it's more or less the M4A2 hull, uh, but it, is this the extended one? That's the question. I think it is, it's Mark 5C, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, um, this is the elongated one, so we'll have to see how we go moving forward. We've got the grab hooks going on, as well as the lights as well at the front. No light guards in this one, which I think is a good option, because I don't know how on earth you would have done it in 172nd scale in plastic, so they just don't put them there. So if you want to add them with some photo etch or some plastic card, uh, then you've got that option. And we'll have a look at doing that. We're going to build this one. Uh, so you add the tools on, and we've got the spare tracks at the front, and then we've got the board that goes on for holding the stowage on the on the front of the hole and then we've got a load of jerry cans and ammo boxes that can go along the front there and that's an uh, idea of how to st stow them as it were and then we've got some applique armor as well in the form of tracks now there are some great pictures on the internet of fireflies with these welded on and that's my understanding there's no fixing points on the side of the holes uh, they were just pushed up and welded on that's 
as far as I know, that's how it was actually done. So you just literally glue them on. Got lots of bits of tracks all over and some spare wheels and that really brings it to life because these things did have a lot of stowage. There's nothing for the rear deck, you obviously have to you know, add your own stuff for that. But from what I can see when they're lined up in Normandy getting ready to go, this is the general layout. They've got uh, track running around the side and around the turret as well as having the actual applique armour uh, parts welded to the turret as well. So there's different ways to go about it. Then we're straight onto the one-piece turret with the one-piece gun barrel with a two-piece muzzle brake. And that all goes on nicely, uh, you know, simple enough as you can see. There's the two-piece muzzle brakes, so just a small seam to sort out there. Then we're putting on the bottom of the turret. Final parts going on with the cupola and, and the aerial mount. And then we attach it. So that's the easy way through. Now if you're going to do the individual tracks, then we've got separate bogies as we go through here with the wheels already on. And then that all goes and gets lined up. And then we've got the Lincoln Lake tracks sprocket with uh, the... Uh, outer sections of the track already moulded in, so you just put this section in between the two bits of the two parts of the sprocket, and then you go on, and the same thing happens around the idler, and then you put the middle section on, and you join it up, and go on through, and then we get uh, the correct sort of run for the track. Now, why would you do this, and why wouldn't you do this? Um, the simple reason is the moulded running gear has the block the, the standard block track which is the t51 track uh, running along here so it's just the standard rubber block tracks which is fine for most shermans but not for fireflies you may find the old picture where fireflies had that track they do seem to have different tracks but they generally have this which is your t62 track which has got this funny semicircle and these uh, raised and these raised circles running along. So you do get those tracks. So this is what I'm saying about Airfix. They're, they're taking a bit of a different stance here. And instead of just going, you get the standard tracks and you know make do with what you will. That's for the simple build for the guys who just want to build this on the weekend, not even paint it, stick the decals on and have fun. Maybe build it for your children, with your children, whatever. But if you actually want to go ahead and try and make a good model out of this, you've got your tracks. It's a little bit extra work, but you've got the correct tracks for the variant, and that is a commendable effort. Uh, they didn't have to do this, and they have done it, so that's that's fantastic, I think. So uh, there you go, as you can see, obviously then you just pick up as you go through. So that's the instructions, typical affair from Airfix as well with all of that. Uh, the uh, decals are stunning. They look to be cartograph. I don't know if it's on the side of the box. Yes, it is. So they are cartographed. And we've got two options. So you've got the famous one, which um, is meant to have uh, knocked out uh, Michael Whitman's tiger. And it seems to be the most plausible plausible outcome of that now. It does seem that uh, uh, it's claimed by this uh, firefly. And then we've got this other one as well, which I have actually managed to find pictures of, which is Belvedere. And um, a bit of a curious scheme on that, which we'll go through to in the next section. So that's your two schemes, A and B. Everything you need there, you've got the tactical markings, the whole lot. So that's, again, great attention to detail there. Then we've got our colour call out. So as I was saying, you've got... Belvedere here, which is from the um, Staffordshire Yeomanry, which is a 27th Armour Brigade, uh, used uh, during Operation Goodwood in Normandy, France, June 1944. And they've got this rather spurious scheme of having all of this dark uh, black over it. Um, it doesn't look like that's the case at all. In fact, it looks like, if anything, uh, it's, it's a bit of staining here, because there's a picture of it where you can barely see the Belvedere. It's very, very light. And... There's a definite section here with a different colour, but it could be, you know, uh, tons of different things. It could be dust, it could be oil stains, fuel stains, it could be from where you've got the water cans there and you've spilt one. So I would personally just spray it up in the olive drab like that and um, then stick your decals on. But you could go for that, you know, the scheme's there. It's a nice one, nice, nice pattern to follow. Um, and it does say here in the research notes uh, that this one is sometimes depicted as having a black disruptive camouflage, possibly field applied, but it is unclear as to whether this may have been the result of weathering and or areas that were repainted in fresh paint. 
probably SCC-15 British Olive Drab. The camouflage pattern suggested is therefore purely speculative and at the discretion of the modeler. So, you know, you can't get better than that. So that's a nice scheme and this will be the one I'll be doing, but we'll be just doing it all over Olive Drab. And then you've also got this one, uh, which is the famous one that took out uh, Michael Whitman's Tiger. But I did this one on the Ryefield Models Firefly earlier in the year, so we won't be doing that one this time. So, good couple of schemes, nice colour call out, everything come to expect. So, as I was saying, on to the sprues. What we've got here is three main sprues for the build, and then we've got a spare sprue with the stowage items, and um, the particular items that are specific for this, um, this model, it seems, although I say that, They've separated this out for a reason, I think. Um, you'll probably find this one as well. But as I was saying, I don't know a huge amount about the Shermans, but I was pretty sure this is an elongated hull, and it was only that done for the Firefly. So we'll have to, we'll have to see going forward whether we get any more um, in this line. But what we've got is some very nice green moulded sprues, whether you like working in green or not, that's what we've got. And taking a close up on some of these details, we can see that we've actually got raised and recessed details running along the back there. Much different to the Cromwell, which is twice as thick. These, it, what this looks like to me is that Airfix have been listening and they're not using the soft plastic. This is rigid plastic, just like anything else. I mean, you can't do that. You know, if you did that with normal Airfix plastic, it would it would break. I mean, that's bending now, but it's not it's not breaking, and it does say. Uh, PS recyclable was polystyrene that's recyclable presumably so maybe it is the same stuff but it is rigid that's the one thing it's 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 good stuff and we've got very fine panel lines and very fine details and in fact over all of this it all looks perfect apart from one area that we'll have a look in a minute so um, I'm quite impressed by all of this especially for 172nd so we've got the tools most of the tools already molded into the uh, hole there so we've got the axe, uh, the pickaxe, barrel cleaning rods, I think those are. Um, and these are the holes for the grab hooks and the lights. Like I said, we're going to have to work out what we do with uh, light guards. There's no, there's obviously no um, cast texture or anything on this. I wouldn't think there would be, to be honest. I wouldn't even think you'd probably add it in 70 second. I don't think you'd see anything like that. Um, so that all looks very good. And as I mentioned in the instructions, got very positive locating areas for the sides of the hole. So that looks very good. Then we've got the turret. So again, we've got moulded in hatches. We've got a cupola to go on there, which is here. Again, nicely moulded. Recessed details. You can see the fineness all around here. It's all, all very, very good. I mean, if they did a range of these, I was just looking then at the, um, I think they're the fire extinguishers, but I was thinking about a Churchill and a few other things. I mean, they, you know, they'd be away. You could probably pick, I paid a tenner for this, but you could probably pick it up for about eight quid. I mean, you just you just build them, wouldn't you? So again, all looks very good there. We've got the moulded on running gear, which if uh, I would be using this if it was the correct track. Um, but you can see it's just the block type. It's just the block type there. I don't know how I'm going to get that to be able to show you. So that's the standard early Sherman T51 block type, as you can see there. That's not what we're after. There's the rear. Um, now I thought the only soft bit of moulding I saw was on the bogies. Now this is this is okay here, but it's as it goes out on that arm, just goes a bit soft, a bit blobby. I bet that is unfortunately worse on the next sprue. So if we've looked straight at that on the individual ones, it might be the same actually to be honest, but I felt that was a little bit soft running up to the ends there. They've struggled to get the detail right to the end, but again, I mean in this scale, you only need to add a tiny bit of mud and that'll all be gone, won't it? So we don't need to worry too much. We've got the tracks there as well. Now there does look to be a bit of stress there, as you can see. Some stress lines, so you want to be careful there. But that's our T62 track, which is what we want for a Firefly. All looking very good. Uh, we've got the wheels there, so that's the side of the wheels that you'll see. And again, you know, given that this is airfix, I mean, we shouldn't let them off for just being airfix, but it's a considerable improvement over anything they've done recently, I would say. Certainly in the 172nd armour or vehicle range. And then we've got the stowage. So this is the, uh, the applique armour 
hope I'm saying that right. Or is it applique? Well, I'm going to carry on with my butchering if it is uh, not applique. <laughs> so we've got the bits of track for the side there as well. I've also seen it bent around the turret, so you might be able to attempt that if you just slightly glue it in and bend it. Um, but you can obviously go along the sides of the hole. We've got the two spare wheels, jerry cans and water cans around there. We've also got a spade. Uh, I think that might be a uh, door for chucking out the spent shells on the turret. I don't know why else that would be there. So again, looking pretty good. And as you can see, very, very rigid plastic, which I'm happy to see. So there we go. That is the uh, Sherman Firefly 5C um, in 172nd scale, which has just been released from Airfix. Uh, I think that's a cracking little kit. And um, I will be starting this one as soon as this uh, video... As soon as you start watching this video, I'll probably have this uh, made and um, into the paint base. So this will be coming as part of uh, the ongoing series we've got on the channel, which has got weekly videos. So if you haven't seen that already, there'll be a link to that at the end of this video uh, where everything's in a playlist. So follow the playlist and you'll get the updates for the videos. Um, let me know your thoughts down below if you think this is um, this is a good thing from Airfix, if this is something new, a good move forward, um, you like what you see, and how you'd go about it, what, what tracks would you use, would you go down the route of the uh, Lincoln Lake tracks? Are you happy that the, you got both included? Um, I was going to get the Tiger, uh, but I've just been building a Tiger in 35th, and I must admit I'm... Um, it's not my most popular subject at the minute because it's um, getting a bit difficult. So I haven't bought that and looking online it didn't look like it was as sharp as this. It would have been nice to have the two. If he had them in the shop I would have picked both of them up. Um, so uh, we may get to that one in a couple of weeks. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. But I may pick that one up if I see it around. But as always thanks for staying tuned. And if you want to see this one built up then um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you like what you see please consider giving the video a like. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do that using the links below. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.